I believe the Michigan defense of 2023 is going to have to hand over their nickname, given to them by Joel Klatt, I believe, of Boa Constrictor, over to the Big Ten and the SEC. Welcome into the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you stopping by for the best in discussion, debate, and analysis. The SEC and the Big Ten continue to tighten their grip, Boa Constrictor, on the rest of college football and take control of the sport. They want it run a certain way, and they are working together to get their way. Let's check out the latest, and it's a, another joint meeting between the two conferences scheduled for next week. This is what we know thus far, according to Heather Dinich of ESPN. Big Ten and SEC athletic directors will discuss a possible partnership in football scheduling, along with their preferences for auto bids in the next iteration of the college football playoff. The discussion is to take place in Nashville next week. Multiple sources from both conferences told ESPN Monday. The meeting is a continuation of the Big Ten SEC Joint Advisory Group, which was formed in February and includes the league's university presidents, chancellors, and athletic directors. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey and Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti are scheduled to meet with the athletic directors for one day. Quote, there is hope that we can definitely move the needle and make some progress on different things, end quote. That source said, quote, if we're all going to figure this out, we've got to be on equal footing. Sources in both leagues told ESPN they would prefer to have potentially four automatic bids each to the playoff when the next contract begins in 2026. CFP leaders have not determined yet what the playoff will look like beyond this season and next. Some said they need to know that before making any decisions about future scheduling partnerships. So let's do the math on a 12-team playoff. Four to the SEC, four to the Big Ten. That's eight. One to the ACC champion, one to the Big 12 champion. That's 10. One to the group of five highest ranked team. And then the one other spot either goes to Notre Dame or an additional team from the SEC or the Big Ten. I don't believe that they would cap it at eight or four from each league, or more likely that would be the second place team from either the Big 12 or the ACC. Now in 2026, we could see an expanded playoff to 14 teams. That would leave two at-large bids additional to either go to, again, this doesn't mean that that Number of four to each of the Big Ten and the SEC and eight total would be capped. That would just be a guaranteed floor for the SEC and the Big Ten. That additional spot or two uh, going to a 14-team playoff could still go to the SEC or the Big Ten, most likely to a second or third place team from the ACC or the Big 12, or Notre Dame obviously factors in. Quote, I'm for anything that gives us the maximum number of postseason opportunities, one SEC source said. I don't count bowl games as postseason opportunities. This is where we've landed in college football. If you don't mean postseason opportunities, then you should state college football playoff spots. Some have also expressed interest in limiting the role of the 13-member selection committee or eliminating it entirely. I am on record for years and years and years in eliminating a committee, a subjective group of people, 13 people that basically own college football in determining who makes the playoff. I would like to see objective criteria and the more that we can address the scheduling and make the scheduling equitable based on records, based on last season's performances, the previous season, then we can work toward objectivity of playoff selections and not this guessing game of what a 13-member committee is going to determine uh, while holding the rest of us hostage to their uh, discretion. Quote, I think anything we can do to take the subjectivity of a committee off the table is really helpful, the SEC source said. We may not be able to completely get rid of subjectivity the more we can minimize it. And so Tony Petiti's idea of multiple auto spots for a conference has a lot of value. I'm not sure four is the right number. So if four is not the right number, I don't know what that right number would be because it can't be five in a 12-team playoff, obviously, because there are not enough spots. I don't think that being an SEC source that they would want to reduce that to three per conference. They would want to go for four, or maybe it's a combined number, meaning instead of 
three or four guaranteed for each conference. Maybe that's seven total guaranteed between the, the Big Ten and the SEC. Or again, we are also projecting toward a 14-team playoff. And I can't imagine that the SEC and the Big Ten would wield so much power that they could get five auto bids from each league. That would be 10 spots out of the 14. That leaves two for the ACC and the Big 12 and a group of five highest ranked team. And that only leaves one other spot for either Notre Dame, the Big 12, or the ACC. While the future CFP format is a long way from being determined, guaranteed bids for eight of the 14 playoff spots to the SEC and the Big 10 would receive significant pushback from others. It already has. In March, the CFP and ESPN announced a new six-year, $7.8 billion contract that runs through the 2031 season. ESPN secured a six-year agreement that will cost $1.3 billion annually beginning in the 2026-27 season, which makes that likely that we go to a 14-team playoff field just to increase the revenue because the contract is built for both 11 games or 13, depending on 12 or 14 teams in the field. There are protections in place for the ACC, Big Ten, SEC, and the Big 12 those champions, along with Notre Dame, are the highest ranked group of five champion. In order for some guarantees, though, the other FBS conferences and Notre Dame surrendered the bulk of control over the future formats of the SEC and the Big Ten. Sources hesitated to say any concrete decisions will be made next week, but Big Ten athletic directors have a regularly scheduled meeting Wednesday in which they hope to prepare talking points that could produce, quote, real concrete things, end quote. Here are some additional thoughts. That if the SEC and the Big Ten have a combined number of auto spots, meaning not guaranteed spots for just the SEC or just the Big Ten, that it's a combined uh, number of spots, let's say seven in a 12-team field or nine or eight in a 14-team field, consider this. This is why the Big Ten would want to push the SEC to a nine-game conference schedule because they're going to be working at a deficit, a disadvantage in the number of playoff teams if there's not a guaranteed number. Also consider that when it tells us in the first paragraph of this article by Heather Dinich that the SEC and the Big Ten are looking at scheduling options, and of course the thrust right here is on the CFP, but it could also be a partnership that they... uh, forge between the two leagues and scheduling non-conference games between those two. So consider this. The most money in non-conference play is going to come from the SEC taking on the Big Ten. By far, those are going to be the non-conference games that are going to wield the most power and yield the most revenue. All right, that's also going to drag down the records and the subjectivity of the playoff committee may take spots away from the SEC and the Big Ten if they're playing these huge non-conference games and weighting down their records. Therefore, if they get a guaranteed number of auto bids to the CFP, they get the best of both worlds. They get the number of spots guaranteed, plus they can play uh, valuable, revenue-generating non-conference games against each other And it doesn't matter how much they weight down their records because the top five from the Big Ten or the top four from the SEC or whatever the number they land on, those teams are going to be guaranteed into the playoff regardless of how many non-conference losses they took on because they faced difficult competition. So they can make the money on the front end with the big non-conference games, but they can guarantee the spots to the playoff regardless of how much it weights down records, possibly into the eight and four range in a 14-team playoff field. We will have so much more to say about all of this. And uh, again, going back to our scheduling system here at the Voice of College Football, we have put that together for either a 12, 14, or 16-team field in which we would focus first and foremost on fixing scheduling with equitable non-conference scheduling. We have outlined our format on that. Please check it out. Then also we have gone through where we would select playoff teams because of the schedule being equitable. Number one, based on record. Number two, head-to-head. Number three, a strength of record, which is based on dominance on the field against uh, your scheduling uh, difficulty. Leave those comments and questions below. Please like the video and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football.